World Wetlands Day is celebrated on the 2nd of February annually. It is part of a celebration under the Ramsar Convention. The Ramsar Convention is a convention that signifies wetlands of international importance. Trinidad and Tobago became signatory to this convention on the 21st of April 1993. We have three wetlands of international importance in Trinidad and Tobago. They are the River Swamp, the Carney Swamp, and the Bon Accord Lagoon, which makes up parts of the Boko Reef ecosystem in Tobago. Wetlands can be defined as areas of marshes, fens, peatlands. Several of them have static or flowing water. Some of them are submerged permanently, some of them are submerged temporarily. And wetlands make up several different types of ecosystems. Some of them are salt water systems, some of them are fresh water systems, and some of them are a mixture of salt and fresh water, which are brackish water ecosystems. Wetlands are extremely important to the survival of humans. And humans as well pose several challenges to the survival of wetlands. Wetlands are a storehouse of biodiversity. Several species of plants, animals, amphibians, mammals rely on wetlands as their source of survival. And I should also say even humans rely on wetlands as part of their survival. They are a tremendous source of biodiversity and sustainable life fields for individuals as well. Wetlands management fall under the remit of the forestry division. Several of them are designated as wildlife sanctuaries. Some are designated as protected areas, and some are even designated as environmentally sensitive areas. So we have a lot of legislation in place protecting our wetlands in Trinidad and Tobago. Sustainable livelihoods and co-management form an integral part of wetland management in Trinidad and Tobago. Several tour boat operators use our wetlands and ecotourism as a source of livelihoods. Our wetlands are also used as livelihoods for fishermen, crab catchers, and oyster catchers. So we see the importance of our wetland ecosystems in the livelihoods of individuals. Today's feature is designed to showcase the floral aspects of wetlands. And when I say the floral aspects, I mean the plant aspects. I'm going to showcase the mangroves in the wetland ecosystem. Mangroves in the wetland ecosystems are of three types. They are the red mangrove, the black mangrove, and the white mangrove. Very easy to remember as they are the colors of our national flag in Trinidad today red, white, and black. Please enjoy our presentation on wetlands. Trinidad and Tobago has a rich and diverse heritage of flora and fauna. Due to our close geographic location to the South American mainland, our marine habitat is heavily influenced by the flow of the Orinoco River, causing sediments to deposit on our coastlines, creating an ideal condition for special trees to thrive. Mangroves are very unique trees found in these coastal areas that have adapted to thrive in harsh conditions. They have the ability to survive in both salt and fresh water, unlike any other species. Mangroves have a unique filtration system to remove most of the salt from the water and have adapted to the low oxygen conditions of the soil. Mangroves can be found in the coastal wetlands of Trinidad and Tobago. Approximately 70% of the mangroves on the western coast are found in the Kearney Swamp, whilst the remainder are distributed among smaller wetland systems. In Tobago, mangroves are mainly concentrated in the southwestern end of the island, which includes the Bonacord Lagoon, Buco Bay, and Kilgrin Swamp. It is estimated that mangrove forests cover approximately 90 square kilometers in Trinidad and 2 square kilometers in Tobago. Management of mangrove forests in Trinidad and Tobago falls under the ambit of the Forestry Division. 
where wetlands that are declared prohibited areas and wildlife sanctuaries under the Forest Act, Chapter 6601, are constantly patrolled and monitored for illegal activities. The Karani Swamp is not only one of the largest mangrove forests on the island, but is also the second largest wetland in Trinidad and is protected under the Ramsar Convention as a wetland of international importance. This swamp runs along the banks of the Karni River and contains numerous channels of brackish and saline lagoons with intertidal mudflats. The central section of the swamp is designated as a wildlife sanctuary and is home to one of Trinidad's national bird, the Skyed Ibis, together with over 100 other avian species. The Nariva Swamp is the largest freshwater wetland in Trinidad and has also been designated a wetland of international importance. The swamp is located on the eastern coast of Trinidad, immediately inland from the Manzanilla Bay, where its mangrove forests can be found growing where conditions are more saline. The Bonacord Lagoon's mangrove forest is the largest remaining mangrove system in southwest Tobago and is part of a mangrove, seagrass and coral reef continuum, with the red mangrove being a dominant species. This forest has been increasingly subjected to human impacts such as pollution and encroachment for housing. Seven types of mangrove species have been reported in Trinidad and four types in Tobago. The three major species commonly found are the red, white and black mangrove, which ironically reflects the colors of our national flag. The red mangrove has reddish prop roots that originate from the trunk, growing downwards, thus stabilizing the tree and supplying oxygen to the underground roots. Seeds sprout into pencil-shaped propagules that drop into the water either germinating next to the parents or can be carried away by the tides to another suitable habitat. The black mangrove is identified by its dark bark and long slender trunk with cable-like roots projecting out of the sediments. These roots are called pneumatophores or breeding roots, which acts like snorkels allowing for gaseous exchange. The white mangrove occupies higher land and unlike the red and black mangroves, these don't have visible aerial roots. They grow as a shrub and are least soil tolerant. Mangrove ecosystems provide services that are essential for life. Mangroves support food production by sustaining fisheries, supply minor forest products and promote a sustainable livelihood to the local community. Their massive root system act as a storm buffer by dissipating wave energy from tsunamis and hurricanes, thus preventing shoreline erosion and as a result regulate coastal water quality. Mangroves weather the impact of climate change by removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, making them one of the planet's best carbon scrubbers. It is estimated that the world's mangrove forests sequester approximately 24 million metric tons of carbon in the soil per year. That's three to five times more than tropical forests. Mangroves serve as a safe haven for marine life. The tangled maze of roots create a confusing shallow labyrinth where many animals take refuge in this protective fort. Within the calm sheltered waters of the mangroves, away from predators, the juvenile fish and invertebrates find food, nutrients and safety. Therefore, without mangroves, nursery life in the nearby reefs would be in trouble. Mangroves face serious threats and have been declining during the last decade. More than 50% of wetlands have disappeared because of flawed developmental activities. In Trinidad, mangroves have been negatively impacted in a number of ways, such as solid waste dumping, reclamation for agriculture, industrialization and coastal construction. Global climate change and sea level rise has also proven to affect the mangrove population as well. Yet all is not lost. It is possible to reverse this damage and restore these vital biodiversity vaults. Small but significant efforts continue to make a difference as mangrove regeneration projects and cleanup campaigns aid in alleviating man's negative impact on these unique ecosystems. <laughs>